Tech should be groundbreaking and promote innovation. Traditional payment systems are heavily layered, disconnected, and perceived as a cost center to the business. Modern businesses need flexible payment systems that can help them adapt to change, grow, and scale fast. I recently came across a company with tech that approaches payments through a radical new lens. Checkout.com. Checkout.com is a leading digital global payment solutions provider for brands like Shein, Grab, Sony Electronics, Wise, and Henkel. Discover how Checkout.com can help your business thrive at Checkout.com slash tech. That's Checkout.com slash tech. An Elio's original. Hello and welcome to Web Crawlers, the podcast where we do a deep dive into some of our favorite mysteries. Each week we will introduce our topic, lay out our research and findings, reveal some conspiracy theories, and conclude with our own hypothesis. I am Ali Siegel. I am Melissa Stettin. And I, producer Maria. Melissa, who are our patrons today? We have Daniel, Jim, Jill, Adam, Emma. Now, let me tell you why I paused while I was reading the intro. It's because I took a look at the patrons and Jill is the name of my mom and Adam is the name of my brother. <laughs> so I'm like, that is, is weird. that is that did after Thanksgiving, my family decided that I needed financial support and joined <laughs> my Patreon? I think they had a talk. I think they had a talk. Yes. And they went, yeah. look, and let's let's all just join the Patreon. There was some resistance. And your mom yeah. said, look, we're doing it. We have to do it. Because I, I, <laughs> I did leave Thanksgiving. I did leave Thanksgiving early. So it's totally plausible you that did. as soon as I left. Yeah, because I started not feeling well. And I've been sick for the past like week. So it's totally oh. plausible. I left and they said, guys. We need to join our Patreon. Are good. <laughs> so uh, thank you. Thank you to my family. And thank you to Daniel, Jim, and Emma, who might just be pseudonyms for other people in my family. I don't, I don't know. Fake email thank, accounts. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Melissa, do you want to – this is a joint episode from me and Melissa. Um, and it's about our one of our favorite topics, the housewives. Melissa, do you want to tell everyone what we're talking about today? Yes. So today is all about the many crimes that the housewives from the housewives series on Bravo have committed. Yes. And basically some of these housewives franchises have turned into true crime reality shows and it's amazing. Yeah. I was stunned while I was doing my research that first of all, we don't even cover it all, but most of these people have been could have committed felonies like it's almost it's like crazy. you have to commit some sort of felony or misdemeanor to get on the show and a lot of the husbands have as well i think oh, the yeah. most common i've found is wire fraud yeah and none of the wives seem to know what it is i also don't really know what it is i may have committed it i don't i have no idea um, <laughs> who knows <laughs> So how about I start with the first two and then you can get into some of the more popular ones. Sure. These are some older housewives, uh, some older housewives crimes, both real housewives of New Jersey. I never watch New Jersey. Oh, my God. Either. OK, I don't watch Housewives. But when I did, Housewives of New Jersey was Shakespearean. I know. Oh. I heard it's the best one. It feels like mob wives. It's so intense and also violent one of the most famous scenes is <laughs> <laughs> it's so good because it's so violent it's very violent one of the most intense scenes is uh teresa guidice i might be i'm judice judice thank you <laughs> guidice <laughs> guidice <laughs> <laughs> it's so much effort. It was so much effort put into I making did. it sound I Italian. Too, I put too much effort into it. <laughs> Goody Jay. Goody Jay. <laughs> I hope you How have do a you say it? Jay. Judice? Judice. Teresa Judice. Judice, she flipped over a table at uh on one episode uh, when she was getting in a fight with someone. I gotta watch the show. Anyways, <laughs> so she good. and her husband or her ex husband Joe. We're both indicted on federal fraud cha char charges. Charges. <laughs> In your New Jersey accent. <laughs> federal fraud charges. 
they exaggerated their income, I guess, when they were applying for loans before oh. they were even on the TV show in 2009. Then they got on the TV show, so they started making more money, and then they started lying on their tax returns so that they could still get the loans. Yep. They're saying they're making less money than they got. At first, they said not guilty. Then I believe Joe pled the fifth. Then finally, they pled guilty. They were sentenced in 2014. Teresa got 15 months in prison. She's served and she's out now. And Joe got 41 months in prison. And he uh, had to go back to Italy in the interim while he was waiting to do his sentencing because they, they found out during the duration of this that he was not an American citizen. So now he faces possible deportation back to Italy. So this was a huge, one of the first huge scandals. Yeah, I remember hearing about this. That happened. And there's also a very sad song that you've probably heard. Teresa's daughter's song. Oh, no. Oh, my God. What? It is. Oh, my God. So one time her daughter, Gia, writes and performs this song at like a family reunion about how their family is broken and how she wishes things would get better. What? And we have to play it. I can't believe you haven't No, seen I've it. never heard this. Okay, hold on. I'll text it to you. Gia said song, Waking Up in the Morning. Uh-oh. I think Waking it got a new life a morning. couple years ago when Will Smith tweeted it. And then she it did got a, cover a whole of new it. life. He and did? There, yeah, what? and then there Will Smith remixes Gia's song on TikTok just a few months ago. <laughs> Waking up in the morning, thinking about so many things. I just wish things would get better. I'm trying to get rid of them, but nothing seems to stay the same. Woke up in the morning, doing my hair, make them get my clothes on. Walking into school, thinking of what is going to happen next. Oh, whoa, things are just caught up in my mind. Just cannot get rid of them. I'm worrying and worrying. I just cannot get rid of this. I cannot take chances. It's just too much. Waking up in the morning, going into school, worrying and worrying. It is just too much. Yeah, yeah. That is so sad and so dark. Poor girl. I know. I've heard that in like TikToks. I didn't know where it was from. But anyway, so that's the story of Teresa Guidice from from Real Housewives (laughs) of New Jersey. Then this was the craziest. Danielle Staub, I believe she was only on for one season because she was so bonkers too crazy for housewives too crazy for housewives yeah she was uh only on in two uh no the real housewives main cast member for oh main cast member for two seasons i i apologize and she was a friend for three more seasons so she was not too crazy she has cocaine charges multiple felonies and has has even held a man hostage what okay (laughs) why (laughs) so this was in people magazine according to documents in miami's u.s district court her name used to be beverly ann merrill she changed her name to danielle staub after this whole incident oh she and this guy daniel aguilar who was her alleged drug dealer boyfriend at the time they were arrested by the fbi in june 1986 for holding a man hostage that they blamed on a bad cocaine deal for $25,000 in ransom. I mean, yeah. <laughs> sometimes you got you got to do what you got to do to get <laughs> that you gotta do. sweet sweet powder. She says that she didn't really have involvement in the crime, but the documents state otherwise. Mm-hmm. They say that she made a phone call to the man's dad to ask for money. She like made the ransom phone calls. She oh, she no. threatened injury or death if the money wasn't delivered. 
She was arrested at a Miami apartment where police discovered there six kilos of cocaine (laughs) (laughs) and $16,000 in cash. Whoa. So she changed her name after this. Yes, and people did not know this when she was... And it was a huge plot line of her season because someone had written a book. I believe her former boyfriend at the time wrote a book and about, called her out about this and called her out. Oh, and someone, shit. yeah, and someone found the book and oh my God. and revealed that it was her. Uh, also, just found an article on page six. Daniel Staub claims Teresa stabbed her with a fork on Real Housewives of New Jersey. <laughs> Whoa, which. With a name like Staub. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get Staubed, <laughs> baby. Um, okay, so those are two New Jersey crimes. Now let's get into a few crimes that are going on right and now. Li- li- currently. Yes, and they're breaking. Breaking Breaking crimes. news. <laughs> so we've got, currently in the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, there's Erica Girardi, a.k.a. Erica Jane. Yes. She's married to Tom Girardi, who is like in his 80s, and he's this famous lawyer. He's the Aaron Brockovich lawyer, the one representing all of those people. Like he was this lawyer who was like for the people, like would get all this settlement money. Like he was a good dude. Yeah. He he had a great reputation at yeah. first, and he was he was the biggest lawyer in Los Angeles, super well known. Okay, so what happened, was it 2020? All this kind of news started coming out. All this money that was supposed to go to all these victims of like plane crashes and like other stuff, they had not gotten any of the money. Yeah, so what happened, the background is in 2018, there was this Lion Air Flight 610. It took off from Jakarta and it crashed. It killed the pilots. It killed the crew. It killed all all the passengers and so these people were left the the families were left as like orphans widows apparently it was something wrong with the passenger jet because they had crashed before there was some right. there was something wrong with the boeing they knew I it was like there were problems they just didn't do anything to like fix them they were like yeah. whatever it's fine right so they sued boeing And Tom Girardi represented all these families, Mm -hmm. the widows and the orphans. So what happened? He asked a Chicago lawyer named Jay Edelson to help him as his co-counsel. After the lawsuit was settled, he Edelson claims that Tom Girardi never paid any of the co-counsel fees like to any of the lawyers. So like that was kind of the first issue. Yeah. And then all the victims were like, yeah, we haven't received anything. Any of these like multi-million dollar settlements, like none of the victims had received any of this money. Also, there was burn victims. What was that from? Tom Girardi's fire burn victim, who's owed $11 million, will be paid $585,000 after Erica Jane's La Quinta home sells. That's it? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, so like all these victims weren't getting money. And Tom, like when they would call Tom, he would be like, oh, I have a good idea for you. I'm going to invest your settlement money into this fund and I'm going to make you more money. And so that's why he, that was his excuse for not giving them money. He's like, oh, I invested it for you. And they were like, okay. But like as the years went on, like people weren't getting their money and they're like, what do you do? Like you're, he's like, it's fine. I'm investing the money. You'll have your money in no time. And then it turned out he didn't have any money. He had no money. It was basically a Ponzi scheme. He was using money from settlements to pay the next victims and using their money to pay the next victims and then using most of his money for his like lavish lifestyle for to for Erica Jane. If you watch the show, they have two private jets. They have tons of houses. They have all this money going into her lifestyle, makeup, and clothing. She said she spends $40,000 a month on, like, clothes, makeup, her glam squad. (laughs) 
Tom said during his deposition, he said, at one point, I had about 80 million or 50 million in cash. That's all gone. I also had a stock portfolio of about 50 million, and that's all gone. Gee, so he's just for the past, whatever, 10 years, just like lying to all the clients, just like using his using their money for like to give to Erica Jane to like fund her crazy like and personal personal expenses to to live out his own lifestyle. So the question that keeps being asked is, how much did Erica know? Right. And if she knew anything and Erica's behavior during this is getting stranger and stranger. She filed from divorce. She filed from divorce from Tom. She accused Tom of having multiple affairs then she said Tom was developing dementia, and that's why he was being negligent with the money and the Even fund. though this has started like 10 years prior when he was totally coherent, because he was on the show. Yes. And yes. you could see him being like, oh, he's like funny telling stories, like did not have dementia. <laughs> yeah. And also they the scandals and the lawsuits had kind of started trickling in from a while before of him not Mm -hmm. fully paying people. Then Erica talks about this car accident where he (laughs) drove off of a cliff and flipped his car. I put the link in there if you want to start at 455. And it's an unbelievable story that she, the weirdest part of it though, is that she changes the story a million times throughout the season. And then broke his ankle. As a result of the crash, his ankle was... Right. Got it. Got it. Got it. He was also unconscious for 12 hours, but no one... He was? (gasps) That's not good. I know, because I found it. (gasps) It's unbelievable, because at the time, I remember thinking, he's broke his ankle and he'll be fine. This is way different. What? He had a head injury, and he broke his shoulder, snapped his ankle, and then broke his clavicle. What, what, he crashed into a wall, or what did he crash Drove into? off a cliff. <gasps> what? <laughs> Drove off a cliff. <laughs> so what happened, she's claiming that years ago, Tom, because of his, like, dementia, drove off a cliff behind their house while coming home one night, was unconscious and missing for 12 hours? Yeah, he was He was hurled from the car and was And missing. then she found him, apparently, or like he answered his phone finally after 12 hours. It doesn't make, it makes no sense. And yes. then that was like the beginning of his downfall, like he had a brain injury, because he claimed in the show a few years prior to that, he's on the show and Erica talks about, oh, he just hurt his ankle. He just had to get ankle surgery. He's fine. He's being a yeah. big baby about it. But now she's changing her story and being like, oh no, he drove off a cliff. And was and unconscious for 12 brain, hours and, yeah. and broke his brain. Yeah. Then it gets even crazier. Erica claims <laughs> that burglars enter his home and that he tries to fight him off and then he hurts his eye and it there it's snowing in Pasadena and all this crazy stuff, which is yeah, maybe even said, better. Tom's house was broken into and he confronted the burglar and then he had to go have eye surgery and then my son had to go over and help and then my son, he rolled his over his car five times on the way home. And everyone's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Tom's house was broken into and he confronted the burglar and then had to go have eye surgery. And then my son had to go over Recently? and help. And then my son, he rolled his car five times on the way home. Yeah, I'm under a lot of stress. Wait, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just these unbelievable stories that keep happening. And it's still going on now in real She's time. She's still filming, which is crazy to me. That these women are still like on camera like, yeah, film film me while I'm going through this insane lawsuit. And she's posting tons of selfies and oh, yeah. writing captions like eat my shorts. Like she she does not <laughs> eat my shorts. She, she does not care about anyone's impression of her or she has not said sorry. She's taking no accountability. So it's a truly bizarre. I do think it's possible that she didn't know that Tom was doing this because she said they didn't really talk or like yeah. they spent a lot of time apart. I can I can see her being like, I don't know. He's a rich lawyer. He gives me money. I don't know. 
I totally believe it that she was probably had a credit card, was on an allowance. They probably yeah. really had no relationship. But still, she's not showing any remorse no. at all. She's just, can you believe this is happening to me, to me? And it's just like, at least say I sorry. I think she's like, just trying to not admit guilt. Yeah. Like make it seem like. Culpability. Yeah, it's, it's really, but it's making her seem like a terrible person. And Absolutely. her new house is in my neighborhood. Yeah, didn't you take a picture of yourself in front of it? Yes, we'll I did. That. Yeah, She's renting Tours. this house that she claims is like her teeny tiny little doll house. And it's still, I'm like, bitch, <laughs> you like live in a dollars. nice house. It's so crazy. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a quick break for announcements. Uh, Webcrawlers has a Patreon to get access to rewards, bonus episodes, videos, discounts. Please go to patreon.com slash webcrawlers. Also, we are continuing our Black Friday sale, and I have added some of my personal art Ooh. to our our website, and I'll post some of it later. But if you want Dolly Parton shirts, Chucky shirts, Steven Sondheim shirts or mugs. R.I.P. R.I.P. for sure. We have all of that um, until we get copyright copyright infringement claims (laughs) so i am moving all that from my society six over to our personal uh our personal page uh which is webcrawlerspod.com or hothorse.horse if you're nasty please continue continue to rate and review us on apple podcasts if you don't like the mailbag episodes just don't listen to them you don't have to say five stars for the regular episodes but i'm bringing it down to three because i don't like the mailbag like it's fine. Just don't listen it's to the fine. mailbag. It's fine. You don't have to like it all, but if you like it enough, let's get that five yeah. stars. Yeah, let's Come get on. it popping. Also, Erios has a hotline. Insert jingle here. 626-604-6262. Erios. Continue to call us. We'll continue to play. After years of getting ripped off by big wireless providers, there's finally a better option. Mint Mobile is the affordable premium wireless service that you buy online, starting at just 15 bucks a month. By cutting out retail stores, Mint Mobile got rid of the crazy overhead costs so that you could score some sweet savings every month. To get your new wireless phone plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash save. That's mintmobile.com slash save. Tech should be groundbreaking and promote innovation. Traditional payment systems are heavily layered, disconnected, and perceived as a cost center to the business. Modern businesses need flexible payment systems that can help them adapt to change, grow, and scale fast. I recently came across a company with tech that approaches payments through a radical new lens. Checkout.com. Checkout.com is a leading digital global payment solutions provider for brands like Shein, Grab, Sony Electronics, Wise, and Henkel. Discover how Checkout.com can help your business thrive at Checkout.com slash tech. That's Checkout.com slash tech. Now, back to our program. Now let's get into something that is going on in real time also. Yes. Literal real time. Jen Shaw. Melissa, Jen take Shaw. us through this one. Okay. So the newest Housewives is Salt Lake City. Came out last year. And there's Jen Shaw. She's married to Coach Sharif (laughs) Shaw, who is a college football coach. And his salary is like the low six figures. Like it's, you know, a decent salary. But they live like this lavish lifestyle. Like she has all this like designer stuff and like drives all these fancy cars, has this like amazing home called the Shaw Chalet. Yeah. And like her occupation has always been kind of a mystery. And, like, she even tried to explain it a few times. And even, like, on the show, that it's, like, a joke of, like, I don't know what Jen does. Like, right. something about marketing. Who knows? Like, she spends, like, 80K on, like, a, on parties. For uh, other people. Didn't she throw someone else a party that was so expensive? Yes. Like, it wasn't even her birthday party? No. It's insane. Crazy. But we did find out recently that her Shaw Chalet, her mansion, was rented Ooh. And her and Coach Shaw own this like pretty modest house in Salt Lake City. So they were like renting this house for the show. Oh, also, my God. Yeah. I looked up the address. It's like 
this like three bedroom, whatever, like decent sized home, like family home in Salt Lake City. That's so weird yeah. that they would have a home, but then rent something bigger just for how they're portrayed yeah. on the show. And all the That's Lamborghinis dark. that is shown she's driving, those are all like borrowed cars. She doesn't own any of those cars. That's so dark. Which is like, I don't think that's that unusual for the show to like, you want to look rich. So like, yeah, but it's a a huge indicator into your personality that you're having to portray that kind of lifestyle. So she was arrested this year. So, and this is all on the show. Like they were filming. So all the girls were preparing to go on this girl's trip to Vail to go skiing. And then they're in this bus and then Jen gets a phone call and it's she's like, hello, like her. She looks concerned. She's like and then takes off her mic pack and then she gets off the bus and she's like, yeah, Coach Shaw, he's in the hospital. He has internal bleeding and she had to leave. And everyone's like, oh, my God, like, is he OK? She's like, I don't know. I have to go. And she just leaves and they're like, oh, my God. And then minutes later, the police arrived not just the police. Not just the police. A, a squat or a squat. A squat. <laughs> a, squat a ton team. of people popping a squat. No, it was <laughs> it was a Homeland Security. Homeland Security. Yeah. The the State Department of New York. Yeah, like uh, they had guns. Like, yeah, the whole shebang. It was crazy. They were looking for Jen Shaw. So like <laughs> it was like what three or four of the housewives were sitting in this in this like van ready to go to Vail and like the police roll up they're like what is happening like at first they thought it was a prank yeah they thought they were like thought they were strippers they were like is this a joke like is Jen playing a joke on us and then they were like oh my god no this is actually Homeland Security it was in the parking lot of Beauty Lab and Laser which is Heather's uh like skincare business (laughs) yeah like so that was on uh March 30th of this year 2021 And it was Jen ended up being arrested and her assistant, Stuart Smith, a.k.a. Stu Chains. Stu Chains. They were both charged with one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud in connection with telemarketing and one count of conspiracy to commit money laundering. Is money laundering fake money? Like, that's where you make fake money? It's where you set up these fake companies. Did you watch Breaking Bad? No. They set up a car wash because if you have all this cash, you need a company. You can't just put it in Oh, the God. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Got you it. make fake receipts, fake sales. Like, oh, we yes. made $100,000 this month when, like, you probably didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's money laundering. And so apparently for almost 10 years, Jen and Stuart are accused of this telemarketing scheme that targeted – says at least 10 people over the age of 55. I'm sure it's hundreds, maybe thousands. Oh, for sure. Because of how much money she's getting. They apparently created these lists of potential victims called leads. And this is like a a marketing thing, like lead lists. Like it's Mm -hmm. just lists of people's info that you can market to. Like Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Yes. Like the leads, like everyone wanted the leads. So they got to get the top in the company. ABC, always be closing. Okay, now I'm on board. Now I know. Those are leads. Those are leads. <laughs> so they sold. Oh, now I get it. So now they it. sold these leads to other telemarketing companies because selling people's info was like very lucrative. And apparently, like you said, all the leads, all the victims were the elderly or yes. people, the uneducated people who. Very susceptible to scams. Yeah. Can't you just get your own leads with the internet now? It just seems like the whole internet is a lead. Yeah, but it's it's a bit it's a business people hire out. So like you could do it internally in your company for sure, but people also hire out people who have do this professionally who have long lead lists. So Jen is someone who has lead lists and does it professionally. So then a company will be like, Do you want to buy this? we want to buy leads from you or something. Yeah. Okay. Which is like right. legal, totally legal. If you're selling legit stuff like, like Saks Fifth Avenue or Neiman Marcus, like we need marketing lists for people and companies be like, Oh, we have lists of those people who would be interested in your product that you can market to. 
So they would sell these lead lists. But these lead lists were people who were, like, susceptible to scams and who, like, would pay. Like, in the documentary that just came out, there was one lady who was, like, in her 60s or 70s, and she was, like, sewing these blankets, and she wanted to sell them, like, online and, like, didn't know how to do it. So she would look up, like, how to sell stuff, and, like, these ads would come up, and you'd click on them because you don't know the difference between real or fake, you'd put in your info, someone would call you and be like, oh, I see you want to like start a company. I can give you the tools to do it. Give me a thousand dollars and I'll send you all of this like info, how to set up a website. Uh So they would pay a thousand dollars for the stuff. And then someone would be like, okay, well, you need to add on this, this and this. You need these packages to market to these people, to these people, none of which is not real. None of it's real. Yeah, and they'd never get it. And they'd just spend more and more money. So people would spend like tens of thousands of dollars because they don't know how much it costs to set up when you just sell on Etsy, but they don't know that. Yeah, or they would be signed up for like a monthly charge and not realize yeah. that that was happening. Yeah, like they people just would charge their credit cards like ten, th- tens of thousands of dollars. I am so dollars. susceptible to this kind of stuff, BTW. No. I recently, I know I shouldn't say that out loud, but I recently got this. <laughs> You're going to be this, added to a Jen Shaw's lead Literally, list. <laughs> I need to watch out for Jen Shaw. I recently got one of those things where it shows what subscriptions you have. And like, I've been paying for stuff for like, 10 years that I don't use and I don't need and that I I thought that I've canceled that is impossible to cancel. Like I have had a, I've had a match.com account since, uh, no, an OkCupid account since 2009. And I swear to God, I don't use it. I haven't used it since Hasn't your credit card expired though? Yes. And I canceled (laughs) it a million times and it just keeps coming back. They I don't well, maybe this is a sign to go back to OkCupid and see what kind of <laughs> yeah. matches are over there. Yeah, you never know what you're going to find. That is actually, maybe that's what God's telling me through this. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's so easy. It's so easy to fall for this kind of stuff. It's yeah. scary. Yeah. There is that thing on your phone now where you can see which subscriptions you have to which apps. Truebill. Isn't that what it is? Truebill, True the app. That's I've the one that I've heard of. Oh my God, I literally just said that I have, that's the story I just told. You didn't say True Bill. You didn't say you True said Bill. You, you did not say the name, I, but I was I thinking think that's I did. I'm True Bill. Sure I, I'm pretty sure I, I said True, True Bill. Bill. I didn't hear I it, but we've got it, we've <laughs> got it recorded. <laughs> we have it recorded. It recorded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's on. Don't you always wish when you're watching uh, reality TV when someone's like, I didn't say that, but it's like all on t- I wish you could just pause and then have oh my them God. watch watch it yeah. together. <laughs> a producer comes over and go and like has them watch a playback. Watch. Yes, you I, did I love when that. the I love when they do that on reality shows when it's like, I never said that and they insert the clip of them saying that. Yeah. Yes. But I wish they could do it and like break the fourth wall and have I them know. watch it so bad. I know. Okay, anyways, I digress. So anyway, Jen faces up to 50 years in prison that she's bananas. currently on free on this one million dollar bond and the wire Wait, was her charge... husband ever internally bleeding no 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 that no, was no, but what a up. strange thing to say i mean of all the things you can say like what a strange like he's bleeding internally if that was him calling Jen, someone was tipping her off like you're about to be arrested. So I don't know if oh someone, she claims someone called her and was like, your husband is internally bleeding. You need to leave. I think someone called her and was like, you're about to be arrested. Get the fuck out of there. Oh, yeah. hundred percent. Yes. Because the look on her face was like, because she was like, oh, I might come back. I don't know. <laughs> like if your husband is bleeding internally, you don't tell a bus full of women like, "Oh, I might come back." You're like, "I need yeah, to go you're right not now. Back. My husband's fucking dying." Wow, yeah, she was wow, acting wow, wow. Was so weird. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So who knows? It was internally <laughs> bleeding, but she was arrested. Uh, dr- I think or on the side of the road, she was driving, and they pulled. Yeah, her she was driving. Uh huh. Yeah, and then they went to her house, and they are like. They searched her house like her sons were there and like her family was there. It was crazy. So, yeah. So the charges, the wire fraud charge carries a maximum (laughs) of 30 years. The charge. Money laundering is 20. 
She pled not guilty to both of these. Mm. And her trial is currently set for March 2022. There are 10 other people who are associated with Jen and her assistant were also charged. So this was like a thing the feds were working on for years. Oh like back my till God. 2019. Yeah. But then in this documentary, The Housewife and the Shaw Shocker is the yeah, name. Yeah, a horrible name horrible for it. Name. Sounded like a porn thing. A hor- whoever named that needs it should to have be been fired. the Shaw Jen Shaw Rest. The Shaw Rest. There yes. Yeah, yes. There you now go. we're talking. Melissa, yes. That's good. Yeah. Thank you. So it turns out Jen had been in trouble with the with the federal authorities before. In Uh-oh. 2015, she was deposed by the FTC for the work she did at Thrive, which is a telemarketing company. And then two years later, Thrive was fined $27 million for deceptive sales, pr- sales practices. So this company she's working for was sued for deceptive, so like for being shady as hell. And then one of her for- one of Jen's former employees, Koa Johnson, also claimed that she would scream at her staff, failed to pay them. He was a, a designer who would like design all of her dress. Oh, yes, dresses. yes. And like said that he was last paid in September 2020, but he worked for her up until January. And she, there's a recording. Someone recorded Jen screaming at her employees like, fuck you, like throwing a chair. And like, it's crazy. Yeah, she has crazy anger issues. Like even on the show, she has crazy anger. They don't issues. hide it. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's this company her and Stu Chain. It, and it was weird because she had all these assistants. She's like, this is my first assistant, Stuart, who was like this 43-year-old man. It's like, what? Yeah. Why is this guy who would like carry her bags? And it was like, what? It was it was kind of weird. She's like, she had two or this third assistant, this fourth assistant. She had so many assistants. And but Stuart was like, okay, that's kind of weird. Why is he your assistant? It was very strange. So they had this company called Mastery Pro, which is the company run by Jen and Stewart. And Stewart has admitted to misleading customers. Mm-mm. He said that Mastery Pro was founded to hide actual ownership of the corporation. Mm-mm. And they claim Stewart claims that Mastery Pro has made more than five million dollars. Uh oh. Yeah. Do we think that Jen knew, though, or do we think that Stu, that Stu is dirty and that Jen kind of didn't have an idea? Jen knew. Jen Jen knew. Jen knows. She knew. knew. She worked at that marketing company before that was involved in all this fraud. All right. Yeah, yeah. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah. Um, (laughs) So, but then Stuart, as of a couple of weeks ago, Stuart changed his not guilty plea to guilty. Uh oh. So that means he might be flipping on Jen. Yep. He committed or he pled guilty to three counts: conspiracy to commit wire fraud, money laundering, and obstruction of justice. He admitted to hiding ownership in money and defrauding elderly people and lying oh. to the FD- FTC. Jesus. So he admitted to doing all that. And he was released on bail and he'll be sentenced in March. And the maximum combined prison sentence is 70 years. Holy shit. And then Stewart had a, he read a statement in court. He said, I knowingly and intentionally discussed and engaged with other individuals to develop a plan or operation to obtain money by false representation by offering and inducing individuals, many of whom were over 50 years of age or older, to provide money to entities that I and others were involved with. So he straight up said, like, yeah, we were scamming old people. My God. And then he said, uh, he added that he became aware that these telemarketing companies were misleading customers by selling individuals information that purported to be services to enhance their business opportunities. These services sold were of no value and of no real benefit to the customer. Dang. So, yeah. So, Stewart's guilty plea could most likely impact Jen's case. Because it's like a business partner. Yeah. So, everyone thinks like, oh, yeah, Stu flipped on her. He's going to get a better, easier sentence. 
But she claims she's like, I didn't do any of this. She's still filming like a new season of the show. Like she went back and is continuing <laughs> filming. It's wild. Which is crazy to me that you would do that. Yeah, I mean, that's insane. There's, should we get into Mary and from Housewives? Yes. Okay, so another housewife of Salt Lake City, her name is Mary Cosby, and it's alleged that she is running a cult, and it's been totally Whoa. overshadowed by this Jen Shaw nonsense, yeah. and I think it's the most interesting part of the season. So hopefully yeah. maybe next season it will get some more attention. Yeah. So Mary is married to her grandmother's husband. Her step-grandfather. Her grandfather. step-grandfather. His name is Robert Cosby Sr. And she says, Mary says, that her grandmother on her deathbed was like, please marry my husband and take over the church. Because... Mary's grandmother had started what's called the Faith Temple Pentecostal Church in Salt Lake City. So upon her death, Mary married her step-grandfather and inherited all of her grandmother's assets and became the new... The pastor. The pastor, yeah. The pastor of this church that people are saying is a cult. What's fucked up is that Mary's mom... Like, should have been next in line for all the grandma stuff, but Mary was, like, scheming with the grandfather. Yes. To, like, let's just take over everything. And, like, her mother is, like, got shoved out of everything. And now they don't talk to her. Yeah. So Mary says that she, allegedly, apparently, Mary says that she is God or is the voice of God. She says that she decides who goes to heaven and who goes to hell. Apparently, she makes members of the congregation work at her businesses for free. And she has tons of other businesses because the same thing as the other housewives, apparently she's using donations to the church to buy houses and to start other businesses. Her uncle, this is a quote, Ernest Walton, says that Mary is an abomination, another member his name was ralph arnold arnold jr says mary preaches that she is god on earth the church members are allegedly asked to donate 10 percent of their income oh my god yeah a former female member said that she grew up unable to celebrate christmas because quote all of the money her parents had for gifts went to the church no Another person claims, uh, quote, my grandpa got injured in the war and got settlement of money and they took it from him, all of it. A lot of the members there are on food stamps and they struggle to pay their own bills. They would make them give them everything. Oh, and God. on the show this season, there's a guy who apparently had to remortgage his house and give all the money, like $300,000 to the church. And now he's no longer a member of the church because of what he thinks is. Uh, well, he died. Oh, he's dead now. Yes, he's dead now. He died of a brain tumor, I believe. He was not dead during the filming. He tells the story no. as a as a human live person, and then once it aired, he mysteriously died. Yeah. There's an Instagram account called uh, Cosby Cult, and it says, 100% if you only knew the depth of it. We thought she was in the hospital. Come to find out she was flying to Europe in a private jet with our money. Mary don't have no money. The church pays for her lifestyle. For the longest time, many of us did not have a clue she was traveling the world. She talked about taking her son to Japan and flying him anywhere he wanted to go with our money while all the members had to ask for permission to take a week's vacation to places as close as California and Vegas. Many of the parents in the church couldn't take their kids to Disneyland because they weren't allowed. They couldn't go on vacation because Bishop told them no. I'm getting mad just thinking about this. The church was nothing but torment after a while. They pretend to be happy and agree, but I know they know the church is off. Another person says, so do you think the church is really funding her lifestyle? The response is, I don't know if it could, if it could fully fund it fully anymore, but some of the key members, 
but we would have love offerings two times a year where just that alone, the churches were raising 500,000 or more. That alone could be a hefty chunk. All of that was completely separate from tithes and offering. 10% is a minimum. I personally always gave around 15%. To be clear, that's 500,000 two times a year. People have refinanced homes and taken loans on 401ks to bring something to the table. You get shamed in the meetings if you don't give some arbitrary number of what they felt was good enough. That's insane. And like in the show, Mary has like, one room in her house which is like her closet and she's just constantly wearing like all designer everything like so many accessories she's wearing like at least 10 accessories and it's all just like weird shit (laughs) like she looks like a crazy person i mean she acts like a crazy person too and also i don't know if you remember one of the first episodes and they totally pass over it her cousin is her maid or something oh yeah but she says they're not friends and they don't really talk. And now in hindsight that you know this stuff, you're like, this is weird. It's really what? weird. So that is kind of the last one that we're getting into today. And that's unfolding now as well as people, I guess, are leaving her church as this stuff comes out. Oh, wow. And there's audio, too, of Mary... I couldn't find it, but of Mary complaining that her churchgoers didn't give her enough money for her birthday or enough presents. Um, Oh, my God. So we'll see what happens. If you guys know any other housewives crimes that interest you or want to share some that tickle your... <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember Ta- Ta- Taylor from uh, Beverly Hills Housewives? Her husband killed himself because yes. he like, filed for bankruptcy and was like in so much debt. Yes, I mean, and and also there is there is and a Dorit, orange- Dorit, and her uh, her husband were like. They owed a bunch of money to someone and people were like chasing them around. (laughs) And there's a real housewife of OC whose son got super into drugs and ended up shooting someone and going to in and out of jail forever. I mean, we'll have to do a mini Patreon episode of all the little things. We just tried to capture the big ones. But yeah, there's so many. There are. I mean, it's it's everyone has been uh, Phaedra Phaedra on. Uh, Atlanta, her husband went in and out of jail, I think, for wire wire fraud or embezzling. I don't crazy stuff. Anyways, Melissa, where can people reach us if they want to? You can email us at webcrawlerspod at gmail dot com. All right. I am Allie. I think Erica knows more than she is saying. Siegel. I am Melissa. The burglars came in and Tom <laughs> got an eye injury and then my son flipped his car <laughs> while it was snowing in Pasadena Stetton. And I'm producer Maria. This is One Wild Ride. <laughs> Blasucci. Cool. Bye. Bye. <laughs>